wonder where the Dwemer have gone. Perhaps better to wonder why one remains. Even gods dislike the absolute, for it stinks of something larger than themselves. If you were given the choice between a finite lifespan and immortality, which would you choose? The answer seems obvious, but the more I consider it, the stronger my belief becomes that I would pick the former. The inevitability of death is an eternal source of anxiety to men, myrrh and beasts. It's also an incredibly morbid subject, the very epitome of a morbid subject in fact, so I won't subject you to it for any longer than necessary. But in Tamriel, there are mortals who have achieved immortality, or at least some semblance of it. Night Paladin Gelibor administers the Chantry of Auriel, nestled between the frozen precipices of the Forgotten Vale, serving the Time God in solitude. Dive Fear has devoted millennia to the pursuit of wisdom from his Tower of Telfir. And of course, there are vampires like Harkon, whose bond with the Lord of Domination gave him immunity to aging, for a cost. But of all the inhabitants of Tamriel who have endured the errors, who have seen empires rise and fall, who have witnessed plagues wipe out entire civilizations, and wars that end countless family lines, none among them have suffered as much as Yagram Bagan. The passage of time may not claim his life, but every year of persistent existence is visible on his broken body, and an even greater toll has been taken on his mind, even if we can't see it. Yagram Bagan was a master crafter, a scholar, and an explorer, but he is an orphan now, bereaved of every last friend and family member he has ever known. He is the last of a dead race. Being an intellectual, he could at least take some solace in the severity of his fate, for through his memory, the Dwemer may survive. Only that solace was stolen from him. Such is the price of immortality. In contracting the divine disease, Bagan bequeathed eternal life, but he was also blighted by decay of the flesh and mind. He was debilitated and driven to insanity. It's not a fate he would wish upon his most bitter foe. He may have been broken and riddled with dementia, but the fact remains that Yagram Bagan is the last living dwarf, and the secret knowledge of Tamriel's most enigmatic race lives on through him. Yagram Bagan is one of the most fascinating characters in the Elder Scrolls, and this is his story. Hey guys, it's Drew here, and welcome back to Fudge Muppet. No topic in Elder Scrolls lore comes closer to the Dwemer when talking about great unsolvable mysteries. The more you investigate them, the more you read up on their history and delve into their magnificent subterranean cities, the more questions you'll have. For every answer, there's a hundred questions. Their inexplicably sudden disappearance has been the subject of fierce debate among Tamrielic historians, but one crucial thing is always lacking. Primary sources. How can you get first-hand accounts of what happened when every member of the race vanished simultaneously? The only answer lies in the corpusarium beneath Telfir, but Bagan guards the secrets of his people vigilantly, and there are some things even he does not know. Nevertheless, he is one of the most important figures in Tamriel, and his story begins close to 4,000 years before he was last seen by the Nerevarine. Exactly when Yagram Bagan was born isn't known, but during the reign of Jumak Dwarf King, he was a master crafter in the service of Chief Tonal Architect Kagranak. He was likely born sometime around or before First Era 600, giving him at least a hundred years to rise the ranks and establish himself as a notable Dwemer before their disappearance in First Era 700. As a master crafter, Bagan would have been in the highest echelons of Dwarven society. Contrary to popular belief, piety was abundant among the Dwemer. They did not kneel before the gods of Men and Myrrh, Adric or Daedric, but they did venerate reason and logic as transcendent ideals that would bring them to eternal glory. Their worldview was diametrically opposed to typical religious teachings, yet the role technological advancement played in their culture was similar in many ways. This manifests in the titles of great craftsmen and philosophers. For example, Chief Tonal Architect Kagranak was called both High Engineer and High Priest of the Dwemer. Scholarly matters were intertwined with spiritual matters, and one's understanding of technology correlates with their holiness. Scientific endeavour was akin to religious dogma, and those responsible for pioneering new advancements were considered preeminent and enlightened. 
Of course, as Bagan readily admits, no Dwemer could come close to matching the genius of Lord Kagranak. His knowledge of tonal architecture dwarfed that of all his peers. But what Kagranak could envision, Bagan and his colleagues could build. Yagram, along with most of the master crafters in service to Kagranak, were incredibly skilled in working dwarven metal and building intricate machines. But the High Engineer was the one with the revolutionary ideas. He came to his crafters with complex schematics, and they would help him make them come to life. The Nerevarine's conversations with Bagan leave me yearning for more information on the Mur himself, not just on Kagranak. However, despite the esoteric nature of Kagranak's tools, Bagan displays his expertise by insisting that, with the Chief Tonal Architect's journals and plan books, he would be able to restore the Mythopaic enchantments to Wraithguard. But Bagan is haunted by the notion that some secrets are best left that way and ponders whether or not to reawaken the supernatural forces that Kagranak sought to control. At the climax of the battle at Red Mountain, Kagranak's plans came to fruition. The High Engineer donned Wraithguard and struck the heart of Lorcan with the might of Sunder, but Keening would never have the chance to flay and focus the power that emanated from the Doom Drum, for its wielder vanished, along with every last Dwemer on Nern. In an instant, an entire race was removed from the arena. And not just any race, the most technologically advanced and arguably the most powerful race ever to inhabit Dawn's Beauty. Kagranak had attempted to attune the beating heart of the world. He hoped to add a new note to the mortal ensemble, but the mythopaic melody that resonated from Red Mountain proved too great for the Dwemer fort organs. One can only imagine how that moment felt to the other peoples of Tamriel. A momentary lapse in the natural order of things, a brief palpitation in the chest of every man, myrrh and beast. Whatever this reverberation felt like, one thing is certain, and that's that it didn't reach beyond the confines of Lorcan's domain. It did not penetrate into Aetherius, or the Void, or the manifold pockets of Oblivion. We know this because one dwarf was spared this fate. By sheer fluke, Yagram Bagan was not present. In his own words, I cannot say what happened, I was not there to observe. I was in an outer realm at the time, and when I came back, my people were gone. This revelation unsurprisingly perturbed Bagan, and for many years he refused to accept the fact that he was the last one left. The specific outer realm Bagan was in at the time of the disappearance isn't certain. We know from his own words that he was one of Lord Kagranak's master crafters, and though he didn't work on this particular project, he knew it from his fellow magesmiths. So, it's unlikely that his journey beyond Mundus was related to Kagranak's grand scheme, or even the War of the First Council in general. What's most likely is that Bagan, like most members of the Dwemer race, fervently pursued knowledge, especially on matters beyond the confines of mortality. As I said before, the dwarves were not under the delusion that gods did not exist. To be an atheist in this universe would be foolish. The distinction between dwarves and other mortals is that they saw their own intellect as enough to rival any deity. After all, the definition of a god is wildly ambiguous. Daedra lords function in unique ways, with weaknesses and blind spots, and the Aedra were also clearly susceptible to being duped. Just look at Lorcan's trick and the creation of the Earth Bones, or the classic story of Azura and the Box, where one wizened Dwemer named Nachilbar deceived the Queen of Dawn and Dusk into self-doubt by having her wrongfully guess that there was a red flower in an empty box. In truth, there had been a red petaled flower in the box, but the dwarf had used sleight of hand to conceal it in the sleeve of his voluminous robe. He had not been testing Azura's omniscience or lack thereof. He simply wished to convey to his students that higher beings were not infallible. So while a dwarf like Yagram Bagan may seem to be the portly paragon of reason and logic, he would benefit from consulting with Daedra. Adric realms are not out of the question either, but we know very little about those. An example of a slipstream realm of Aetherius is the Imperial Battle Spire. According to the Battle Spire Athenaeum, a host of societal institutions were suspended in so-called pocket universes to achieve a state of immaculate virtual reality. One such institution, deep in the ethereal plane of Aetherius, is the Battle Spire. It is a proving ground, or sophisticated war college for prospective battle mages. There is also the Dreaming Cave of the Sigics. 
where it is said one can enter into the Daedric realms and return. Both the Sijic Order and the Dwemer dabbled and had dabbled in telepathy. Perhaps Yagrim Bagan had studied alongside the Elves of Arteum, and had been in a pocket realm of Aetherius when the Dwemer vanished. The text Nerevar at Red Mountain suggests that Azura showed the Kaima how to separate the power of the heart from the Dwemer people, and as a result, the Dwemer were turned to dust, their stolen immortality taken away. So if you subscribe to the idea that Azura punished the Dwemer for meddling with the heart of Lorcan, then it would make sense that she simply had no jurisdiction over Bagan while he was dwelling in an Adric place. But we can only speculate about this so-called outer realm for now. After returning to Tamriel, Yagrim Bagan looked upon the deserted hallways of Dumak's citadel at Red Mountain, and found nothing but the echoes of civilization. Steam-powered machines continued to pump and bellow, automatons patrolled aimlessly, the pride of Dwemer artificial life doomed to rust in the vast ornate tombs. And so, Yagrim Bagan set out in search of other survivors. He travelled to all of the former Dwemer colonies he knew of, but each and every last one was deserted. Certain that he was in fact the lone survivor, he returned once again to Red Mountain. This was, after all, the pinnacle of Dwarven society, and were there to exist any explanation for the tragedy, it would be found here. Red Mountain was where Dumak Dwarf King ruled from. It was where Kagranak and his crafters started working on the Animidium project. And it was where the heart of Lorcan continued to reside, the doom drum that vanquished his entire race with a single beat. For all we know, Yagrim Bagan kept looking for answers for a few thousand years, to no avail. When Dagofer reawakened and began spreading his divine disease across Vardenfell, Bagan was at Red Mountain, and inevitably he caught the disease. This extremely contagious and deadly strain of the Blight, commonly called Corpus, is responsible for making the last living Dwemer look like the monstrosity we see beneath the Tower of Telfir. As you can see, the disease grotesquely deforms the victim's body, but more significantly, at least as far as Bagan is concerned, it destroys the mind of the sufferer. Fortunately for the last dwarf, he had his connections, one of whom being a prolific Telvani wizard named Dive Fear. In Bagan's own words, I owe my life to Lord Fear. He took me in when I was a mad monster, out of my mind. In time, I emerged from my dementia, and now I am quite lucid most of the time, though my body is still a grotesque and useless prison, and I still have some feeble hope of cure. Lord Fear has tried many spells and potions. None have helped me, but neither have they harmed me. If anyone can cure this disease, Lord Fear can. I still retain my cunning, but my hands and eyes fail me, and my memories have long faded. My only consolation is each day to mock the gods who destroyed my race, and condemned me to this bleak existence. Bagan may be confined to the Corpusarium, where he's surrounded by mindless, deformed horrors, but at least he has his mind, a wealth of Dwemer knowledge spared from the throes of madness. His walking frame, modelled after the Dwarven Spider, was almost certainly his own design, perhaps constructed by someone more physically able, and he also has Dive's daughters to provide him stimulating conversation. Bagan was not quite as lucky as the Nerevarine, though, who with Dive's help managed to curb the physical deformities as well as the insanity, while keeping all of the beneficial effects of the divine disease, including immunity to all diseases, increased strength and endurance, and also immortality. Fear almost certainly treated Bagan the same way he treated the Nerevarine, but the physical state of the dwarf was irreversible. In the bowels of the Corpusarium, Bagan may never again have the chance to search for remnants of his vanished kin, but he has the next best thing, the information network of a very influential wizard. When asked about his status as the last living Dwemer, Yagram says, This is how I style myself. I do not know for a fact that I am the last, but in my travels thousands of years ago, I never encountered another. And since I've been here, I often ask Lord Fear, but he says he has never heard a credible rumour of another Dwemer, on Tamriel, or in any outer realm. So perhaps Bagan's pessimism is warranted. Maybe he'll endure as an eternal victim of Corpus, kept from exploring Tamriel, condemned to a bleak existence. Since the disappearance of the Dwemer, Bagan says, I've been alone in this world, trapped in this grim prison. 
but there is a small victory in Yagrim Bagan's story, a victory he may be hesitant to accept. On the topic of corpus, Dive Fear says, the magical principles of corpus disease are elusive and miraculous, far more subtle and powerful than any conventional sorcery or enchantment. I am persuaded that it is in some manner the curse or blessing of a god, perhaps both a curse and a blessing. If Dive Fear is right in calling it a god's blessing, and Dagoff Ur is right in calling it the divine disease, then Yagram Bagan achieved something his past master Kagranak and his whole race could not. Kagranak martyred himself and the dwarves in pursuit of transcendence, in the ambition of breaching the confines of mortality. Well, inadvertently, and with many negative effects, Yagram Bagan attained immortality. He should have died thousands of years ago, leaving his race officially extinct. But no, he contracted a tiny piece of divinity, allowing his knowledge to persevere. As he himself put it, each day, Yagram Bagan mocks the gods who destroyed his race by existing. It is only a small victory, and he may choose to keep most of his knowledge secret, lest another succumb to the same folly as his former mentor. But so long as Yagram Bagan lives, so too do the Dwemer. Thanks so much for watching, guys. My name's Drew, this has been Fudge Muppet, and I'll see you in the next one.